concerns over liberal bias in Silicon Valley. At Twitter, it's gotten to the point where conservative employees don't feel safe to express their views. That is according to the CEO of Twitter, Jack Dorsey. Here's what he said in a recent interview. They do not, they do feel silenced by just the general swirl of what they perceive to be the broader percentage of leanings within the company. And I don't think that's fair or right. Joining us now, former Arkansas governor, Fox News contributor, Governor Mike Huckabee. What's he doing about it then? Well, not very much. And I'll tell you, the surprise was not that he admitted that conservatives were not only a minority, but really didn't feel free to express their views. But here's the big question. Why do they feel uncomfortable? I thought liberals were all about love and tolerance and diversity. Why on earth would a conservative at Twitter, in the midst of such incredible love and acceptance and tolerance, feel somehow overwhelmed uh, and, and unable to express a view? I think it just shows that there is an incredible hypocrisy on the left, but the big picture for Twitter, as well as the other social media companies, they've got three choices. They can mitigate their problem by doing something to fix it. Uh, they're going to end up with litigation, or they're going to end up with very heavy regulation, and I think we're barreling toward that option and sooner than later. Well, this isn't, the, to that point, Governor, this is not the first time Dorsey has made mention of his company's bias. Governor Aaron Elmore here. Good morning. Thank you for being here. What can the Good average morning. American using the Internet and using Google and using Twitter do to avoid being a victim of this bias? I know I switched my search engine for a while, and it just wasn't as efficient. Google really does work the best. What are we to do? Is there a solution? Well, I mean, what you did is about all we can do at this point is go to Bing or DuckDuckGo or some other mm -hmm. uh, search. But you're right. Google uh, sort of owns the space in a big way. but. I think really it's going to be, uh, and I hate this. I mean, I truly hate the fact that the government is going to get involved and start regulating a private industry because I think that probably messes it up uh, in some new ways, may fix some things and tear up 10 more. But there's really no other option. I remember when Microsoft, and I know you will too, uh, when they thought that, you know, they don't need to lobby, they don't need to be involved in politics because they were sort of immune from it. And then they got hit with antitrust suits. I think these companies know they're in some trouble. I don't have really the confidence that they realize how much trouble that they are in because of what right. now we know to be their unbelievable bias. Well, I think that the government didn't act with Microsoft soon enough and let it get because it, people in Washington government didn't realize how mo so much control that, that Microsoft had over the nation and really the world through that operating system. And we're still paying the price to this day that we waited so long to do something yeah. about it. You just look at um, the penetration of its email software today because of the dominance of that operating system. Real quick, the Obama administration continues its assault on the job that President Trump is doing. I want you to listen to former Vice President Joe Biden from the Human Rights Campaign's National Dinner over the weekend. Listen to this. Barack and I agreed to remain silent for a while to give this administration a chance to get up and running the first year. God forgive me. These forces of intolerance remain determined to undermine and roll back the progress you all have made. This time, they, not you, have an ally in the White House. The president uses the White House as a literal, literal bully pulpit. Governor, your reaction? Well, the Trump administration is not the administration that has tapped people's phones, including reporters and their families. It's not the administration that busted into Gibson Guitar with fully automatic armed SWAT teams over some wood used in the neck of the guitar. It's not the administration that went after many, many nonprofits, pro-Israel, pro-life, conservative organizations, and sick the IRS on them, costing them hundreds of thousands of dollars in lost contributions. For Joe Biden to talk about bullying, his administration administration was the most bullying administration. They weaponized the federal agencies, and we every day discover mm -hmm. a new way in which just before the 2016 election and even after, uh, they injected the power of the federal government to try to prevent Donald Trump's election and then to try to delegitimize it. Uh, it's, it's almost comical to hear him talk about uh, an administration that is bullying anything or anybody. Yeah, and I also sense a sense of jealousy 
that the economy is doing so well. And I almost feel like they're rooting for the American people huh. not to prosper because it's not under their watch. It's under the current watch and the new yeah, but policies. Dagan. Yeah, but, but why would they be unhappy with it? After all, President Obama said that he was the one who made it happen. So wouldn't they want to continue their own economic miracle that Obama himself, by the way, said could never happen? Yes, I think that everybody, I think that President Obama and Vice President Biden need to be thanking the Federal Reserve, <laughs> quite frankly, <laughs> Ben Bernanke and Janet Yellen, because we really know who rescued oh, yeah. the economy back then. Governor Mike Huckabee, thank you so much, sir. Great to